Hey everybody, this is Mr. Mazzoro, and today we're actually going to do our third and final lesson on plant growth and development by talking about different ways to grow plants. We're going to talk about conventionally grown plants and organically grown plants, and we're going to spend a little bit of time really tussing out what those words mean because there's a lot of weight given to those words and a lot of people misunderstand critically what an organically grown fruit is as opposed to just a conventionally or regularly grown fruit. And then we're going to talk about hydroponics. What does it mean when something is grown hydroponically? What are all the different types of hydroponic systems? And lastly, we're going to talk about vertical farming and why that's the thing and what it's used for. Organic and conventional first. I understand these these are very, very loaded terms. I understand a lot of people have very, very strong opinions about whether one is better or worse than the other, whatever that means. It's not my job here to give you your opinion, but what I do want to do as a botanist and a horticulturalist is just lay down exactly what these words mean so you can make an informed decision as to which one you want to feed yourself with. The most important thing to understand is the difference. Organic farming uses fertilizers and pesticides that only contain ingredients from living things. Conventional, fertilizer, conventional farming uses fertilizers and pesticides that don't contain ingredients from living things. They have been manufactured in a lab. Now, here's the important thing. Plants, and you don't have to write this down, but please listen to me. Plants grown organically produce chemically identical fruit and leaves to those of conventionally grown fruit. That is to say that there is no difference between an organically grown tomato and a conventionally grown tomato in terms of the nutrients they provide for you or how healthy they are for you. Fruits and vegetables labeled are organic are no better or worse for you than conventionally grown fruits and vegetables. The organic grown root fruits and vegetables are more expensive because the farms producing them usually produce less and usually get less government subsidies as, an, uh, as a conventional farmer. Organic farmers use the same types of chemicals that conventional farmers use. These, ke these chemicals are just not produced in the lab. Instead, they come from natural products. What do I mean by that? I'm going to go on. Pyrethrin versus carnations. This is a conventional pesticide used on a lot of different uh, 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 conventional farms, agriculture farms. It sprays, it's a n neurological deterrent for bugs. Bugs get sprayed with it, they have seizures and they die. This comes from carnation flowers. If I take carnation flowers, grind them up, and put them in oil, I'll get pyrethrin that I can use on an organic farm. If instead I go to the store or go to Dow and say, hey guys, this is this chemical that comes from carnation flowers. Can you make me this and I'll dilute it and spray it on my crops and they make it? That makes that makes carnation that makes that chemical pyrethrin an inorganic or conventional pesticide. In other words, if it comes from flowers and I use it, it's organic. If someone makes the chemically identical thing to it, it's pyre it's pyrethrin, it's an inorganic. What is true is that organic farms have less of an environmental impact than conventional farms. In fact, whereas conventional farms destroy the soil over time, and that is true that they do that, organic practices actually improve the soil over time. And this produces a continually healthier and healthier crops that need less and less cost to grow. So, what do I mean organic or inorganic fertilizers and, and that? So these are your basic organic fertilizers. The pros to using these organic fertilizers, bone meal for phosphorus, blood meal for nitrogen, and green sand for potassium, would be that they last longer, they help the plants resist disease, and they improve the soil over time. Why do they help plants resist disease? Well, it's sort of like, you know, plants are hungry for these nutrients, and the choice is this, you can give these nutrients a little bit over a long period of time or all at once. If you take a starving person to a buffet, that's okay, but that's not gr as good as feeding the starving person for a long period of time. The organic fertilizers feed the starving plant for a long period of time. So why doesn't everyone use these? Well, they're more expensive. Their exact composition isn't known because all of these, bone meal comes from bone, blood meal comes from blood, and green sand is literally a, a mineral, green sand. They come from nature, so, so we don't know how much phosphorus, for instance, is in bone meal, or nitrogen, for instance, is in blood meal. And 
you get decreased plant production. Anyone that tells you you can grow more plants organically is lying to you. That is not true. A simple proof of this is Cuba. Cuba was put under a trade embargo after the Cuban Missile Crisis, and as a result, they had a complete embargo against all petroleum-based fertilizers. In other words, conventional fertilizers. For the remaining 30 years of their existence, they were forced to grow all their crops completely organically because they didn't have any other choice. Cuba had to get, over those 30 years, 30 import 30% to 60% of its food from the United States and other sources because they physically could not produce enough to eat. When they grew things conventionally, they could. It's just it's just not correct that 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 organic or organic food produces more food. It, it it's, it's very very simple. Think about it like this: it's it's cost it's cause it's a supply and demand. If an organic farmer produced more apples than a conventional farmer, then the supply of apples would go up and the cost of apples would go down. The fact that apples, organic farm uh, organic apples are more expensive is proof that there's less of them and therefore you produce less of them. Conventional farm, uh, conventional fertilizer, otherwise known as Miracle Grow. Conventional farmer is fast, it's cheap, and you know exactly what's in it. Twenty four eight sixteen, boom! I know exactly how much nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium is in there. So why don't why is it bad? Well, there's a lot of reasons why it's bad. It changes the soil pH. It usually makes the soil more acidic. So if you have a neutral or basic loving plant, Miracle Grow is going to kill it. It makes the soil too salty because inorganic or conventional fertilizers are basically just salts. That's why they dissolve so well in water. It often has more fertilizer than plants can absorb. Again, starving guy at a buffet, right? He's not going to be able to eat the buffet. And as a result, you get all of these fertilizers just being wasted in the soil that you paid for, run off into streams and lakes where they call algae where they cause algae blooms in the streams and lakes and a lot of water pollution. The surge in plant growth, these steroid-like inorganic fertilizers, cause plants to, to basically burst and grow really, really big, really, really fast, but that ultimately weakens the plant. Again, it's like steroids. Over time, it's worse for the plant because the plant isn't supposed to grow like that. And because they're there and, there and gone the next day, you need to apply them multiple times per season, which causes inorganic or conventional farms to be more pollutive than organic farms. So, to review. Both organic and conventional farmers both use chemicals, pesticides, fungicides, and herbicides. They do. Both produce chemically identical food. The difference is that organic food has no chemicals that were made in the lab. It, it was produced with no chemicals that were made in the lab. All comes from naturally. They produce less food, but usually the quality goes up. And that food is more expensive. Less of it. And it's produced without the damage to the environment. Conventional fertilizer, more food, but more, pollution, more pollution, even though it's less expensive. Really, it's this environmental aspect is the reason why you would buy organic versus conventional food. If you care about the environment, you should definitely buy organic food. If you don't care about the environment and you care more about your apples not costing three dollars, then you should buy conventional far then you can then you should buy conventional food. Now, aside from organic conventional, there's other ways you can grow plants that actually are organic and conventional. There's hydroponics, right? Soilless growing, growing plants with just a nutrient solution. And there are different hydroponic systems. There's traditional hydroponics where the nutrients are sprayed or misted or supplied directly to the roots. They're either poured on a plant or they go through tubes where the plant roots are literally bathed in a nutrient solution. There's also aquaponics. Here, instead of using conventional fertilizers that are that are dissolve in water and create the nutrient solution, here you use fish waste. Fish waste would be an organic source of the nutrients uh, uh, and, and a natural source of getting those nutrients into the water, and then that nutrient solution is supplied directly to uh, the roots of a plant. Last, there's aeroponics. Here, instead of the plants sitting in a nutrient solution, it's literally misted directly on the roots. The roots are suspended and the root and and uh, or in air and the and constantly misted with this nutrient solution. Why would you want to grow something organically? Well, or so why would you want to grow something hydroponically? Well, if you grow indoors, you don't need any pests. Uh, you don't have any problems with pests or funguses or anything like that. You can control the environment. 
You can plants spend less energy when they're grown hydroponically looking for water and nutrients because it's provided right to their roots directly by spraying or bathing them in it, which allows the plants to grow faster, healthier, and usually allows the plants to produce bigger yields. The disadvantages are that plant seeds are slower to start. Usually, aside from aquaponically, these systems would be dependent on conventional fertilizers. Hydroponics is usually not organically grown material unless it's an aquaponic system. That material is basically just, the nutrient solution is basically just miracle grow or conventional fertilizer dissolved in water and supplied to the roots. And the systems are expensive to maintain. I mean, you need to maintain lights. You need to maintain a pump. If your pump breaks, then your plants stop getting watered and they die almost immediately. It's an, it's an expensive system. If you don't want to grow hydroponically, you can grow vertically up. Vertical growing is literally growing on a wall or stacking plants on top of each other. And this maximizes space efficiency and water efficiency because you only need to water the top plants and then that water trickles down. And you can grow a whole lot in a very, very small amount of space because you're growing up and not out. So places like cities, vertical growing is very, 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 very important to them because if they want to grow really, if they want to grow enough food to supply their city with enough food, well, space is at a premium in a city, so you need to start stacking your plants up on what little space you have. The problem is that it's difficult. Plants need to put, be put in the right space and get the right amount of light, and you can't have water-hungry plants on the bottom or plants that grow too far out because then they'll fall out or over. And in general, plants grow worse because if they're grown directly out from a wall, they spend a lot of energy trying to right themselves and grow up and as a result, they don't grow so well in terms of fruit. An upside-down tomato plant would be a great example of a vertically grown fruit, right? You grow it upside down, but that plant spends a lot of energy trying to right its side up, not grow upside down. So that's it. Conventional means fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides that were produced in a lab. Organic means those same herbicides, pesticides, or fungicides, but instead they are produced using living things. Other than that, and the damage that conventionally cause fertilizers and, and pesticides and fungicides due to the environment, organic and conventionally grown food is virtually the same. I should mention one disclaimer. I am only talking about organic food and conventional food when it comes to vegetables. I'm not talking about organic meat versus conventional meat. Organically grown meat, organic chicken and pork and beef is actually better for you, has better nutrient content than uh, conventionally grown chicken and beef. But that's a different story. I'm a botanist and a horticulturalist, so I can't really get into that. What does it mean to grow something hydroponically? You have a nutrient solution, either through inorganic chemicals or uh, conventional chemicals or uh, fish waste organically aquaponics and you supply those that nutrient solution directly to the roots vertical farming is what you do in cities or when space is at a premium and it's basically just stacking plants on top of each other it's good because plants are at a because space is at a premium you could grow more in less space it's bad however because you have to kind of know what you're doing and it, it, it isn't for the faint of heart um, all of a sudden when you start stacking 50 acres of plants on top of one acre, it gets to be a very complex system. So that's the basic ideas of plant growth and development in terms of horticulture, kind of everything you need to, need to know about how to grow plants and why you would add this versus that. In the next chapter, we're actually going to talk about flowering and fruiting, plant reproduction, and all the different ways that you can take one plant and turn it into two.